me start the recording. All right. It seems like we're going. Okay, so Kelly's having some tech issues um, due to power outage. So she's trying to pop on. So if she does pop on, I'll just do my best to bring her in when I see her. Um, what we're doing today is free live group reading. Uh, we're also open, I'm also open to answering questions uh, to my best, to the best of my ability about the spirit world or mediumship in general. Um, and then I'm also happy to do contacts for you guys. We have a few attendees on live with us. Um, so if any of you would like a reading or would like to pop in with a question, um, now is the time to get started with that. I don't want to call anyone out. So even if you just got a general question, that's okay. Um, otherwise, I mean, I can also teach you guys something if you want. Um, let's see. Don't know if you guys have been able to hear me or not. Um, Looks I like can't hear you. all the way around. Okay, great. <laughs> that's good. To, that's good feedback. Thanks. Um, did you? Did, is there anyone that wants to be the first volunteer or just to ask a question? Um, Rose, is that you? Yes. Um, are you wanting to do a reading today? Do you just have question? A or? reading would be good. Okay, great. Um, and are you comfortable with your video if it pops on? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, and it may show you and it may not. It's for some reason the platform's acting a little bit uh, funny today, so I don't know what's happening. Um, okay. So, I could see you and I could good. see myself in the lower corner. Okay, good. <laughs> um, all right, so there's a couple different ways we can work. I can just open the space and see who I naturally become aware of, or if there's someone specific you're hoping to hear from, which I have a feeling there is, you can give me name and relationship and I can try to work that way. Although there is still a chance that someone else that you have on the other side would try to step through as well, but we can sort that out. So uh, mainly, mainly my son, Nicholas. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I do have you on Facebook. So I've seen his photo, um, but I knew that we would meet at some time. So I've been intentionally not reading any of the posts. because I just don't mm -hmm. I want to know anything about him. Um, that hinders more than helps. So give me just a minute and let me see if I can tune into Nicholas. Okay. All right. So with Nicholas, did, did you personally not always call him Nicholas? Did you call him Nikki? Nikki. Nikki. Okay, because that's what he's telling me. He's like, Nicholas, I'm Nikki to mom. Um, but I think a lot of his friends call him Nick more so than Nicholas. Is that correct? That's, yes. Okay, but just, it feels like just mom is allowed to call him Nikki. I don't think there's a whole lot of people allowed. To there call are him. some people who call him Nikki also. But not a lot, right? Um, it really depends. It goes back and forth. Okay. It's Nick or Nikki. Um, the real, clo the close ones call him Nikki. Okay. Um, and it looks like... Kelly is popping back in. So let me see if I can. This is why it's hard to do both parts. Um, okay, let me see if I can make her. I see you, Kel. <laughs> there she is. Okay, let me unmute you. Um, okay, so what, what has happened um, is that we are just getting started. Now you're muted again. Um, sorry, my Mine is also like acting crazy and making people co-host who I'm not trying to. Um, okay, so there you are. So we're just starting to tune into uh, Rose's son, Nick, to give her a reading. I'm a little bit in there and I'll give you a minute to tune in. Thanks for being a trooper and Kelly's actually in her car trying to, trying to do this. Um, okay, so let me continue to tune in. Um, and I know with Nick that he passes from cancer, is that correct? Yes. Okay, but I do know that already from your Facebook, just because I saw something. I don't know much about it. So let me go mm -hmm. into that. Um, is this a battle over like a couple years with him? Yes. Okay. About what seven. What I know is that he is physically, he shows me that he's a little stockier in the onset. Is that correct? Um, he's just tall and 
he never he's a big guy but not never had you know was stocky in a way but just really strong okay um and if you can give me just kind of yes or no that'll help me keep the momentum with him okay. and I'll, if it's no that's fine and i'll just oh, all right understand um so the the other thing with him is he really makes me aware that he does have this physical strength with him at the onset and then over time you see him almost um really physically deteriorate before your eyes is that accurate yes because I know towards the end that he just shows me that he, um, as I think most people who suffer from cancer do, that he, he loses a lot of weight and just, it's almost like he shows me, he just, even his face changes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but the thing with him that I am very aware of is that he always maintains this light inside of him that exudes. And even when he's having a really tough day, he he's able to, to still have that light to comfort you. Does that make sense? Yes. Because um, it feels like he just has this silver lining outlook on things. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? Very the true. Thing I want to check with you is, because I, I know that there's this strong connection with the two of you. Is, does he, is he giving you pennies from heaven? We would say, are you finding pennies different places? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and I um, wasn't, I wasn't sure how true that is in real, but yesterday I found a few all over the place. And that's kind of how it happens. It's in these unexpected ways or, you know, somewhere where you've just looked on the ground and then you look again and suddenly there's a penny. Um, so just we had the, that that we is had, a fact from him. I just want to say real quick, we had his, his memorial yesterday. It went really well, except for the celebration really let me down. I was very disappointed in something that happened. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, mm -hmm. And then let me, Cal, I'm trying to unmute you, but for some reason, oh, there you are. Um, do you want to come in at all? Um, sure. I'm connected with Nick a, a few times, so I know him. Um, I okay. know him well just from what, when we've connected. Actually, there you it's are. It's funny that Joy brings up the, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it's funny that, that Joy Joy brings up the pennies from heaven because, Rose, I could swear that we talked about that in a previous session and um, and you weren't sure, but you were going to look out for them. Is that right? Yeah, I think um, maybe in the way beginning, so I didn't remember. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cause, because that, that sounded right for me. Um, I wanted to talk about the, uh, Nick was showing me that somebody got a tattoo in memory of him and I felt that maybe they showed this to you recently that you were unaware of it until recently but it feels like it's on somebody's arm so do you uh, does that make sense for you to somebody show you a memorial tattoo that they got for Nick oh my god <laughs> I just got goosebumps it she had gotten it not just for the memorial it was another time I was shocked it's his picture on her, his face on her arm. And yeah. it was done a few years ago, actually. Oh, my gosh. But you just saw it recently, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, my God. I just have goosebumps now. I think Nick just wanted to give you evidence that he was with you when you had a celebration of life. So however yeah. it went, even if I was disappointing, disappointed because I nobody got up to speak because everything was done perfectly. And then that didn't happen. For some reason, everybody went blank um, and didn't think of it till after they went home. Okay. I'm still very upset about it. I wonder if there might be another time that you guys could get together and, and have people lined up to speak because I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that they're regretting not being able to express themselves, but yeah, everything went yeah, perfect. But and the mo yeah. main purpose of the celebration was to speak on that level, right. on the group level. Instead, everybody isolated at their tables and talked privately. So my, my family and I couldn't hear any of it, and we're disappointed. But we're going to have a birthday on February 12th. Okay. The celebration. Okay, and maybe invite people to speak at that time, because it feels as if there was an overwhelming amount of emotion that mm -hmm. took place. And, and I know that that can... 
um, that can stifle things that people want to say, you know. So mm -hmm. maybe if they're if they're prepared and maybe have had some time to, to process through their emotions in February, it would be really nice if they could get up and talk about him at his birthday. I even wondered if Nick had anything to do with it because everybody experienced the same brain lapse type of thing and didn't remember till after and okay. yeah so anyway um i'm still upset about it because that was what i was looking forward to out of everything yeah of course of course well he's come today to, to let you know how much he loves you and um and to also to thank you for giving him a voice on every platform that you've had access to including facebook mm -hmm. So um, even if everybody else wasn't ready to stand up, he knows that you have and that you you have you will continue mm -hmm. to stand up and give him a voice. Yes, so, that's what I had wanted to uh, him to be present on that level, and yeah. that's why everybody worked so hard. That was the main purpose, and it just huh everybody. I didn't think of it till after I went home, and I said, "Wait a minute, what?" <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, anyway, um, well, let's, let's look yeah. forward to the birthday celebration then. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And wow. The thing about the tattoo. Hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that, that you were able to see that. So, yeah. John, you yeah, got so does, he does have a good amount of friends that turn out for the memorial. Is that correct? Like he shows me like at least 12 of his close friends do attend. Is that correct? Yes. There was the church was full. And the room for the celebration in Old Town, Old Town was full. Right, because it feels like a lot of family, and then it feels like extended people that he either knew through work, or but then he has this these friends that are very close to him, and a yes. lot of people do attend to show their support and to come out. It's just the sense, as Kelly said, that there's just this overload of emotion, I think, for everyone. Yes, And yes. it does make me aware that some of his friends, the way he gives it to me, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, is that they, they wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable like crying in front of a large group of people. Does mm -hmm. that sound <laughs> like something? It might be, um, yeah. The other thing, and so is with Nick, can I just check, is he a little bit of a, a techie guy? Like he likes to make videos and take photos mm -hmm. and um, cause he's giving me this suggestion that maybe there's a way to do it where each person could give their kind of testimony, if you will, about him more privately on video and then those can all be played so that they're mm -hmm. not so they can have time to prepare because oh, I know yeah. with him that he does when he does his videos or wh whatever this is that he's doing he does prepare notes for himself or or like an outline of things that he wants to say when it's an important talk does that make sense yeah he does he did that I found them um, I, I actually that, yeah I know I actually it's always from videos. the heart with him because I know that he's very much like a from the heart genuine man um, mm -hmm. but also everyone gets nervous at times in front of other people. Have you also found other writings of his? Oh, a lot, a lot. Okay. I, his whole life is on writings and he recorded his whole life almost in his okay. writings. And I found videos and I also found writings that say something about the videos. Well, that's interesting because the writing that he's moving me towards is just, um, I want to call it like deeper, emotional, almost soul searching writing. Mm -hmm. so, are those some of the things you would have found? Oh, yeah. And some of them look to me almost um, less in the form of like a letter and more in the form of either like prose or poetry. Yes. Does that make sense? Exactly. Um, in some of this writing, is he referring to himself as, as like a bird who can be free? I don't know if you found this one yet. It's interesting how he does write that way. Um, yes, um, like his soul, the, the, the one that I put on the post that you said that you purposely didn't read. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I um, put that there before the memorial and after, and it's about his soul touching theirs and they're floating and touching and leaving fingerprints and, you know, and then in the end saying goodbye, but he, like he closes his eyes. But yes, in a lot of it, and one of them also refers to Roman candles. That's another one um, from his, one of his best writers, favorite writers, Jack Korak. Okay. Um, but yes, a lot of it is about the spirit floating or uh, a lot of it is very metaphoric. 
well, his writing is. He does give me the sense that he was able to process um, his illness and the, the, the end stages of his life through this writing. And it feels like he has this spiritual turn almost where he becomes very spiritually aware that this is just going to be the next part of his journey. Does that mm -hmm. feel like things he was writing about? Yes, yes. Especially, see, one of his friends had um, sent me an exchange they had, and he wrote it to her. And I found that, uh, again, uh, two days before the memorial, and I posted it on Facebook, and then I reposted it. And yes, he. Um, it was like as if he was saying, it was almost perfect for after the memorial too. Like I closed my eyes and I, you know, I could read it, but um, I have to get off this to read it. But he says, I close my eyes and I picture all of us, everybody that I've known, you know, in our souls. He you know. writes about where he's talking about himself as a traveler. And I hope we meet again on, on this road somewhere. He, it sounds familiar. He does write like that too. Okay. I, I mean, it's, I could, think of specific ones with so many writings about that um it's very spiritual all of it all all his writings are like that how special i know um almost as if he kind of and he wrote like that even before he knew he had cancer so um way before because it was it's been seven years you know yeah. and it was only the last uh two months that he lost a lot of weight okay. before that he was very strong he looked very strong nobody would ever know you know except if he talked about that he didn't feel well sometimes you know okay cal do you want to add anything in i'm still working i i think um i think you really nailed it with the writings because that really nick was a writer you know so that that just hit the nail on the head that's what he did that's what he loved that was what he was good at and he left loads and loads and loads of writings behind for Rose to find and read and put together. And I feel, and I've told her this before, that someday she'll write a book, um, including a lot of mixed writings in it. So um, I, I, I think that's wonderful because Rose, um, Joy and I don't talk about any of any of our personal readings. So um, all of these details have just been given to her by Nick, which I think is fabulous. That's amazing. So, I, I'm just like, so specific because when you brought up the tattoo that I saw at the memorial on the person's yeah. arm and um, and then everything else too was right on. So let me just check because he's still working with me a bit. Um, so I know you said he does some film work and writes a lot. Is some of his film style, does it feel more documentary film style? Yes. Um, yes. It's a sense that he really wants to expose that raw emotional truth, whether it's in himself or to help others kind of ex yes. expose their story through his. So I, I just felt that as Kel was talking about the book and the work that you'll eventually have the opportunity to do. And it's it's this encouragement from him because are you not, over you know the years that you were with Nick, were you not necessarily the most comfortable on video or the most comfortable putting yourself out there? Right, I never thought of doing that. <laughs> He's very good at it. It's almost as if he should have been in that profession because he knows how to look at the camera yeah. and talk. He's so confident and kind of makes a little joke about it. Like, mom, you're going to have to consider getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and mm -hmm. giving him a voice that, you know, at this point when you're ready. Um, yeah. And that's that inspiration comes over you is the way I want to say it. Uh, it'll mm -hmm. be it'll be an interesting position for you to yeah. look at his work and be able to carry that on in your own special way, as Kelly said. Yeah, I found the outline to his book he was writing and uh, in each section he put almost like a title to some of the writings where they would be inserted and and the title of the book is we were sailors or we are or something like that and he was working on it and he, one of the videos he explained it and he also gave his on another video gave his password um you know to his writings but then I didn't really need it I think because I found all of them on his laptop and in in his phone actually that I'm scrambling to try to keep sending before his phone goes on the blank <laughs> so you know um but it's it's uh it's work that I'm going to work on uh 
I'll wait a while, you know. you have anything else you want to add in, Kel? Um, no, I would just say, you know, Nick just sends so much love as always and many, many thanks for putting together the celebration of life, even though it wasn't exactly the way that you thought it would go. Um, he's so grateful that you did that for him and memory of him. And I think that there was a lot of love there that like, like Joy was saying, a lot of his close friends, a lot of love, a lot of laughs, some good stories. Um, so just because they weren't shared publicly, don't let that cloud how beautiful the rest of it was. You People can. tell me that it was, and it's something more maybe that I needed. I thought it, it was known. And so I just sat around waiting without thinking consciously of it. And then when it didn't happen, it hit me later because um, I was overwhelmed. One of his friends said he thought that it's because we were all so disconnected and overwhelmed you know did you play so, one of nick's songs that all of the, all of his songs every the dj played all of his songs that he sang also he okay. had put together a playlist of music that he knew nick liked he said he spent a couple of hours looking for it plus all of nick's songs so everybody enjoyed that in the slideshow of photos so that happened everything happened all the tables set up the food was there and the <laughs> but my main purpose of having it was to hear the stories and I didn't hear that and that was for me though you know what I mean everybody else yeah. seemed okay with the way it happened I wonder if you could consider just a private invitation through either email or however you communicate with his friends and just say you know it would mean so much to me if you wouldn't mind just making a quick video or audio recording just giving me some stories about Nick and sharing your time with him with me that would mean a lot to me I'm sure that especially if it was more private, I, I'm sure that they would oblige and give you that. That's a good idea. And um, yeah, I, very good suggestion. Yes. I, um, I, I'm going to send that out there. I don't want the people who work so hard to put that together. And his friends, one of his, three of his very good friends put the whole thing together. Um, I don't want them to feel like they failed because they didn't, you know, so um, I'll be asked, I won't be asking them because I, I'm a, I don't want to hurt feelings, but I'm going to ask all the other people, um, all the other people who may want to share with me. They all seem very willing, you know. I think that's a lovely idea. Mm -hmm. well, thanks so much for sharing, Nick, with us today, Rose. And thank you. I, I thank you. did this at the last minute. I said, wait a minute. I have a lot of stuff. You know, when the goosebumps and everything, you know, and I, I had a lot of stuff and I want to have a session with you and, um, you know, I guess it's in another week or so, but, um, but I couldn't wait. <laughs> so when I saw this event, I said, why not? You know? Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad that you were willing to jump on. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you. And so, Joy, thank you. So nice to meet you. With him. Nice to meet you too. The only other little last bit that he gives me. So it'll be interesting to watch and see if it makes sense by the time that you have your session is, I know your name's Rose, but he keeps showing me these pink, beautiful, light pink roses. And in color theory, we associate pink with the color of the mother's love, which obviously mm -hmm. would be you again. So I'd be interested to know if over the next couple of weeks, if he's somehow getting lighter pink, it's like more of a baby bubblegum pink roses to you. Um, mm -hmm. you just kind of keep an eye out for that along with- You mean like in what I see or feel or- What you see or feel or people sending them to you or receiving a okay. card that has pink roses on them. I or... actually got a, a bouquet of flowers at the, at you know, for my birthday, uh, somebody just handed them to me and I opened up a card with no name that opened up to a bouquet of roses. Yeah, and- some things like that. I have gotten things like that. And and the card with no name, I don't know who sent it. And, you know, already I have that. Oh, that's so special. Yeah, I would just hang on to those things as extra little validations from Nick that he is, in fact, with you and constantly sending you his love and support. Thank you. Thank that's you. A good... He's a great communicator. <laughs> oh, that's what <laughs> Kelly has told me. Thank He's very you. strong at giving impressions, which is wonderful. Yes, Appreciate he always. With us. Thank you so much. Do we have another volunteer who'd like to either 
receive a contact or just ask some questions, you can either raise your hand or just unmute yourself and talk at us <laughs> either way. It's okay if not, I might pressure Courtney to ask a question <laughs> if there's no other questions. Um, we've got a little bit more time. Let's see. Okay, Cherise is saying. Good. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Cherise. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Can we hear you? Let's see. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Um, and it's okay to leave your video off if you'd, if you'd rather. That's totally fine. Is yeah. there someone you're hoping to hear from today? Well, I always think of my dad and my son at my son's birthdays tomorrow. Um, oh. So that's kind of special. But I've been, I don't know, feeling my dad maybe a lot. I also have my grandmothers, you know. What was your dad's first name? Raymond. Raymond, okay. Um, give us just a minute to tune in. And I didn't recognize your name uh, written out, but I, I do. Um, <laughs> We do recognize Sharice. So we know Sharice and we've worked with her before. We've met her son before. Um, and I, I can't quite remember if we've met your dad before, but give us just a minute to tune in here. Can I just check, Sharice, with your dad? Is he not from California? Is he from somewhere else? Yes. Okay. Is he from more from the east? Yes, Midwest. Okay. Midwest? Midwest, east, Midwest. Ohio. Yeah. Um, do you have family that's even further east than that, like either New York or Boston? No. None. Okay. So he's straight to Chicago. Every, is, that what, is that what you said? Everybody's Sorry. in Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Um, Let's see. Kelly, I think you may have met Sharice's dad before. Yeah, I've met him before. Um, I know that he pops in from time to time to hang out with Sharice when she, when she either needs him or just wants to spend time with him. Um, Sharice, I haven't worked with you in this way in a, while, in, in a while, so I don't know where you are in your life, but what I'm getting from your dad is that you're, um, you're trying to make a decision right now between uh, what I see is a fork in the road. I see you're, you're weighing one decision against the other. So you don't have to tell me what the decision is, but can you validate whether or not that? Yeah, I can see that right now. in a couple different areas. Yeah, that could apply. Yeah, because I just, the, the reason I ask that and bring it up is because I feel like your dad, because your dad was always so good to go to for advice. Exactly. Um, and so I feel like you've been wanting to just dial him up and say, dad, what do you think about this or that or the other thing? And I, I just feel like he's been, he's been hanging out with you because he'd like to be able to weigh in. Um, have you also just not been feeling your best lately, like, um, not, I'm not talking, I'm sort of lower on energy lately and, um, just kind of feeling out of, out of balance a bit. Yeah, I've been anxious a little bit. I lost some sleep. Um, I'd say overall things are pretty good, but okay. yeah, there have been some really anxious moments. Yeah, I think I think you and I had exchanged about that. I kind of knew that, but it's more um, it's more like if you get tired. Um, I say that there's a there's definitely a nudge here from Dad to uh, look at what you're how you're treating your body um, in terms of what you're eating and how you're moving and how much water you're drinking and all of that, um, the nutrients and minerals that you're either taking or not, not taking, and just that, that you look to, um, it really the message of self-care here, you know, look to kind of make sure that all of those nuts and bolts are in place so that then when you turn to work on the emotional level that 
you have less to deal with with the physicals. Make sense? Yeah, that's good encouragement. I've been making some changes. Okay. I do see you walking, though. I, I, I'm getting this, um, you know, that you're going on somewhat regular walks, that you're taking yourself out for, like, a walking meditation and stuff like that, because your dad shows me walking next to you. So, um, mm -hmm. so he's saying that you're doing well with that. So you understand that bit? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Joy, if you if you've got any more to hop in on this at this point, you're welcome to. Shockingly, I have somebody different. Um, I kind of always feel Angel around, who is Sharice's son that we brought through at uh, an event before and on another time. Um, and let me just validate a little bit from him, just so I can solidly lock in. Did he get to have a relationship with your dad here in the physical world? Did he ever meet him? Yes. Okay. And would you guys travel back sometimes around the holidays to visit his yes. grandparents? Okay. Because he's talking about uh, Christmas time and he's talking about your dad and that that's when they would get to spend time together. Does that, is that feel correct? Yeah. I mean, maybe not right on Christmas, but my dad always sent around the holidays. Stuff. Yeah. The other thing that Angel's talking about is, did he just love the Christmas lights. Like it feels like yeah. more than just a, oh, they're cool. It feels like he really gets excited and it, that, did you actually take him to, to see Christmas lights kind of around San Diego in different places? Yes. Okay. So he's talking about that. Um, I just wanted to validate a little bit just, just so that we're solid that he's with me. Um, cause I know for sure he's with you. The, the thing that he's showing me very strongly is that he's been working strongly on trying to communicate with you in bigger and new and different ways. Is that correct? Um, the sense that, so are you sometimes, do you feel him physically with you, like in your presence or kind of by your side? I keep wanting to touch the left side. So I think he's kind of breezing by you on the left at some point. <laughs> yes, probably next to where I sit, there's space. Okay. And are you sometimes feeling a little something there? I kind of know in a more general sense, I guess, when I feel like he's near. Um, okay, good. Um, the other thing, I don't know if I'm going to quite understand this. Um, is there somewhere special you used to go that has blue Christmas lights in particular? Hmm. I'm not sure why. He just keeps showing me these little blue lights. Um, if you can't place it, that's okay. I can keep working with them and just see. I can't place that right now, but sometimes he shows me things that I see later. <laughs> okay. We'll just pin that back if there's maybe, um, you know, somewhere that has just, it's a lot of blue, specifically blue lights. Um, but blue also is, as we know, the color of communication. So he's showing me just different ways he's trying to communicate. Did you recently see, um, it looks like a painting or a drawing, but it just reminded you very much of him? Oh yeah, my, my husband drew a picture of him when he was an infant and he recently brought it over. Oh wow, that's so cool. So just to validate that he is, as usual, spending time with you and seeing these things. And I, I do feel like he's starting to impress on other people his presence. So his dad, I, I know his sister, but it feels like there are some other people around, kind of like what you just said, where his dad was impressed just to bring that painting and show it to you. I think he's impressing other people at this point too, um, which is really special. Yeah, I feel like when I share him with certain individuals, like even my friends, like he gets excited, like he wants me to tell people about him. I, I think he likes it and he, I think he's still diligently working and learning um, communication. The other little thing he's showing me, is there a light bulb in your house that's kind of been really flickery lately? It yeah. feels like it's a single light bulb. Um, and I don't think it's in a lamp. It feels like it's more like in the ceiling or somewhere, but it, yeah. it feels really flickery. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes, in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay, so that's the other thing. That's, oh, that's funny. You keep showing me my kitchen light. No wonder. Um, that's the other thing. Those are the type of ways that he's trying to learn new ways to communicate and say hello. Um, so he's, he's doing all of those things. He's, he's a really strong boy. Um, let's see. Kel, you're back. 
<laughs> Kel popped off for a sec, but she worked her way back in. Are you? Oh, I've, got, I've gotten kicked off a couple of times. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. There are real problems here with the power company. Um, so, yeah, I, you know what, Sharice, what I feel that I was getting is um, pictures of a birthday that you celebrated of angels in the past. And um, what I was seeing is I feel that it was celebrated at your house. And um, I'm curious to know if you understand a dinosaur-themed birthday party when he was younger. Do you understand that at all? Does that ring a bell? Oh, not necessarily. But like with birthdays and Christmas, he would get really excited over that stuff. I don't remember the dinosaurs, but it, I'm sure it was a common. Okay, just think about it. And, it, you know, if I'm wrong on the dinosaurs, fine, but I feel like I have to put a dinosaur on the cake. So I, I know that there's a cake um, and it, it feels like it feels like it's a round cake, not a uh, not a rectangular um, cake. And I feel like it's just family. There may have been a couple of friends over, but it's more of a family birthday party. And I know that there were helium balloons because he's showing me, um, you know, a few helium balloons that are either tied to the chair or just behind him. So there might be a picture of this actually, but um, okay. but I know that, yeah, I know that he's showing me, um, he's showing me this birthday celebration that he's remembering. And, um, you know, what I can see is I can see that it's you and your husband and the siblings are around him. Uh, so all of it, the most important people in his life are there. And I feel that there's seven candles in the cake. So you might go back and look at his seventh birthday and see what that celebration looked like if you have any way to reference those pictures. I, I do, actually. I don't remember the dinosaur, but I definitely remember the birthday. And he was especially excited about it. Just so simple, though, you know? Yeah, it wasn't a big ornate celebration, but it was like he knew that he was so special on that day. And I know that when he blew out the candles, you know, there, so there must be candles that he's blowing out because that's what I'm being given. Yeah, that's the um, <laughs> <laughs> Good. So um, there's a feeling, too, that there's been some celebrating of his birthday since. I don't feel like every single year you guys make a big deal out of it. And you make a cake. It's not like that. But I do feel like there have been um, in birthdays just following his passing, so some time ago, that you guys would have still celebrated with your other kids, with either cupcakes or cakes or whatever, but there would have been um, a way to mark his birthday. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was yeah. thinking about doing something tomorrow night. Definitely. I think that would be nice because he still gets so excited about his birthday just the way he did when he was here. <laughs> so he'll have to have somebody else blow out the candles for him this time. But, um, it's, and gosh, what birthday would this be now? Would he be, um, Oh my gosh, probably like, think, would he be wow. like 19 or oh, a long I think 20. Wow. 20. So that is a big birthday. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe you don't get all 20 candles and start by zero or something. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, he gets really excited. Good. Yeah, I, I wish you, we could, um, you know, have a little more clear communication with him. I'm not sure, like, that I'm doing everything I can, you know. I did have some quiet moments over the beginning of the month where I felt like when I slowed down and took that quiet time that I felt more of the peace and connection, you know. But as far as the you know, big like, decisions, I don't, like, I know that they're there, but I don't always feel like I'm getting direct guidance from them. And it's okay, like, if I need help with that, you know. Um, one of the things that I did in my early development that I think really helped, and um, it may or may not work for you and other people, but it's worth a shot, is if you can kind of go into a meditative state, and it doesn't take long, right? It's a couple minutes where you kind of center yourself and get into that peaceful space, make sure you're in a quiet place, 
in your house or in your car, wherever it is. And um, I used to picture myself just sort of going into, you know, the spirit world, heaven, however you refer to it. And, and you find sort of a beautiful garden or um, a bench, you know, uh, in the, whatever you do. And then I would just sit there and I would just, I would just invite my loved one in. So I would sit there if I were you and I would invite your dad or I would invite Angel and just wait until they come join you. And it, it would surprise me for you, Sharice, if you didn't feel after a couple of minutes in there, like one of them had joined you. And once they're there, then you can ask simple yes, no questions. And if you can get a feeling of a yes, no, even if they don't say it, um, then that, that can really help. And then you can go on and ask more um, complex questions once you're comfortable in that space. But that can always be your meeting space until you figure out a new way to communicate. Yeah, great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. sure. I hope that helps. Sorry. Joy, if you can still hear me. <laughs> I can still hear you. Um, thanks for sharing him with us. He's, like I said, I know that he's working diligently to find new ways to communicate with you and ways to say hi. Um, but I think that's a great suggestion for everyone, just that meditation where you just invite them in your space to come and sit next to you and share the energy and feel them there. That's a great, a great place to start. Um, so thanks for sharing him with us. Thanks, Joy. Thank you. Courtney is volunteering herself through uh, chat. So let me unmute you. Hey, Courtney, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> I'm excited to be here. Hey, Courtney. <laughs> We're always excited to have you. We've got a little time left, so we'd love to bring someone through for you or answer questions or whatever we can do. I have been, over the past week or so, I have been really feeling a presence of my grandfather. And... I wanted to just, I feel like there's something that he's trying to get through to me and I, I sense that he's there, but I can't, <clears throat> you know, I just wanted to see if maybe you guys could connect and see if there's anything that he's trying to tell me. What's grandpa's first name? Is Bobby. Bobby. Okay. Bobby. <laughs> um, I, you know, I had a grandpa with me when we were first starting. Did your grandpa ever smoke a pipe? Because this might not be the same grandpa. He smoked cigarettes every single second of his life. Cigarettes. <laughs> but ever, no. ever like a pipe as well? No. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just tune in and see if I could get Grandpa Bobby. Unless, Kel, you've got him already. Well, I have the, I have the image that I'm being given right now of... Um, his shoes. <laughs> I don't know why the shoes. Um, but what I what I want to talk about here is um, I have to talk about this pair of nice shoes that he had to shine and polish. So I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, if you'd understand, um, gosh, there's a smell of shoe polish also. These feel like they're their leather shoes that he had to shine. So I, I, you know what, with your grandfather, I feel that he was a fairly um, casual kind of guy but I know that he would have had this nice pair of shoes and when he put them on they better be polished so is that something that you can remember about your grandfather is that does that resonate with you at all he um he was a police officer and he was also um head of security for a major fancy resort and so I could see that he really probably definitely needed to have shiny shoes but but casual for sure. yeah okay so casual when he's not working but that makes yeah. sense because he was kind of getting me to polish with like the spit and shine that the military guys use yeah you know um that's a that's a reference he was giving me with the shoe polish so it would be that makes sense then that it, it could be his um uniform police uniform shoes that he would have yes. to wear so you might you know, if you don't know exactly, you might have to check. Um, but there, there might be also this, and I don't know if you'd even be able to picture this right now, but there used to be, maybe back in the 50s, 60s, I don't know, there used to be these like shoe polish machines. You could have them in your home, um, but they were these, these brushes that would turn and you could just put your foot under it and it would just actually shine your shoe. So you'd have to check with somebody who would know him around this time to see if, if he actually would have had one of these machines in his house um, okay. or in his bathroom or something like that. 
to, to shine his shoes because it feels very important that, that he go out looking his be his very best. So I'll give that to you. I will definitely ask my grandmother. Okay. Yeah, okay, your grandmother's still living, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, they have a really cute relationship, it seems like. So they would have been married at the time that he passed, right? So they weren't, they didn't get divorced. No, they were together for a very long time. Yes, they were, they were together. Yeah. Because they have this really cute interchange, the way he's showing me their marriage used to be. Um, you know, I, I always say, of course, no marriage is perfect. Anybody who says it is probably is lying. But um, for for their marriage, they just have this um, this nice energetic movement between the two of them where I know that they could really, they could just have a good laugh, that they could really joke with one another. And where his strengths were, um, you know, she filled in with where his weaknesses were and vice versa. So it just feels like there's a really nice partnership here between the two of them. And that since his passing, you know, it, she, she hasn't moved on. It's not like she's dated other guys or married another guy or whatever. Does that make sense? That's true. Yes. They were, they were awesome. And, and she has not gone with anybody else. No, he died about 10 years ago. <clears throat> Kel froze, so I don't know. Oh. Kelly, I don't know if we lost you. She popped off. Let me just um, see if I might have your grandpa as well at this point. So I know that you said that he smoked a lot. He's telling me chain smoker, but would you remember that sometimes he would have just like an unlit cigarette kind of hanging out of his mouth for a few minutes, just talking with it? I would not be surprised. Okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> he's showing me that. Um, would you also see him around the house if he's I feel like he's either gotten home from work or hasn't gotten all the way ready in just like a white t-shirt that serves as like an undershirt. Uh, oh. so it feels like I, he's pretty casual when he's not at work. Um, he, yeah, he was kind of like a cowboy. He, we, he wore a cowboy hat and, but he did have a lot of white t-shirts, um, undershirts. <laughs> yeah, that's how it feels. Like he'd just wear that till he was ready to put his, shirt on um the yeah. other thing can i check is would you know did he ever belong to like a i mean where i'm from they're called like sons of italy or elks club or it's yes the Man club okay i think it i think it is the elk the elk wait is elk that what lodge is? maybe elks lodge yeah okay um because he's letting me know that and and this was just a fun outlet for him and a way to connect that was appropriate and very masculine is kind of what he's saying but i know that he did some charity work with them too is that correct um uh -huh. by that i mean the way he's showing it to me is that they would sometimes have charity functions there or to raise money for charity and he would attend like if it was like poker night to support this charity he that would I, be his way of supporting i don't know that for sure but it's okay. not, i mean I, that wouldn't surprise me totally he he was there and they would go, I don't know if the money was for charity, but they would go there every Thursday night for like a steak dinner. Okay. You know, where they, they went so every single He was there quite week. a bit. Yeah, I think <clears throat> feel like he was pretty regularly attending and had a, a group of friends through there. Um, the other thing is you would remember him being very well known and well liked. He had like oh, a yes. lot of friends, a lot of extended friends. Um, Absolutely. So I'm going to bring it to a little bit of a message here. Um, the way he, he's making me feel is that it's almost like you're having a tough time is probably even a strong way to say it, but there's this little hurdle and you're just not quite finding your balance. Um, I'll just give you what he's saying, then maybe the rest will unfold a little bit more. The way he's saying is it's okay to ask for help from the people that are truly your friends. It's okay to lean into those people a little bit if you need additional, just to, it doesn't feel like it's a huge lot of support. It just feels like you need a little extra help and support right now. And you're trying to take everything on yourself and okay, how am I gonna rearrange my schedule to do everything? And he's like, it's okay to lean into your friends for like a carpool or you know things that are within your comfort zone, but don't feel like you have to do it all on your own. Does that make sense for whatever's going on in your life right now. It does. Okay. 
It does. <laughs> I'm supposed yeah. to, I was supposed to have surgery last week and they did a scan before and they delayed my surgery until this, this Friday now because there was too much swelling in my wrist and they want me to just lay low and I'm not supposed to be doing anything. And a friend of mine even offered to like take my grocery list and go do my grocery shopping for me. And I was like, no, no, that's, weird. that's too skin. much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I think that's what he's showing me with that Elks Lodge is, hey, you know, you've built these friendships and these relationships. And even though you're a little uncomfortable about it, you would do it for someone else. And it's okay yeah. to, to let people help you. Um, it doesn't, you know, it just feels like you're uncomfortable about it. It doesn't feel like anyone, anyone else is, if I can say that. I know Courtney, yeah, that, bit, I feel like I could say that to you. Yeah, that totally makes sense. That's definitely my personality or whatever. I was getting the same message for me. You guys hear? We can hear you. I'm back. I'm sorry. Yeah, I you're back. My message earlier. Okay, but I, I just, <laughs> just yay. I just wanted to validate that same thing. I was getting that um, that same message from your grandpa that you're overextending yourself, um, and and just to allow yourself to receive, even though like you just mentioned, it's uncomfortable for you. It's unnatural for you because you're such a giver and you're such a caregiver yourself that it's, um, it's hard for you to allow other people to do that for you. But uh, just know that it gives people joy and it gives, gives them a sense of fulfillment to know that they've done something nice for you. So um, allow yourself to receive. That's a message that your grandfather is giving me. I also had a nod to, um, oh, okay, hang on. There's a little bit more I'm missing um, about overextending. Just, just make sure that you're not... Um, you're not wearing yourself out with working too much and motherhood, which I know both, both can be exhausting. Um, but if you can, if you can just scale back on your yeses to do this, can you do that? If you can just say no to a few more of those, especially over the next month, that will really help you to be able to um, just heal, you know, from your surgery, yeah. but also just, just to sort of come back to center yourself. Okay. So um, I also wanted to just, mention your grandmother has she been seeing a lot of doctors lately in and out of doctor appointments um she yes she's declining right now for sure getting older and going and seeing the doctor quite a bit yeah yeah okay because he's just he's just acknowledging this with her um your grandfather and he's he's just letting us know that He's aware of her health and, and the stage of health that she's in. And um, your is this your mom's mom? Yes. Okay, because I feel like your mom does. Your mom help to drive her to doctor's appointments or have a heavy hand in helping helping her out from time to time. My my aunt does, um, but next week my mom is okay. my mom is coming down and staying for a while to help take care of her. Cause my, you know, my mom. Okay. Yeah, my okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cause he's showing me that he was showing me your mom really, but it, you know, could also be an, an acknowledgement of your aunt. Um, and that he knows that they're, they're going back and forth. Is there, has there been discussion as to, uh, whether or not there might need to be a facility sometime in the, in the future for grandma? Yes. That's what we're, that's what we're doing next week. We're going to move her into a, like a boarding care home. Okay, I'm glad to know that because um, he says that he supports that decision. And I feel like one of them, either your mom or your aunt or both, have really been reaching out to him to ask, you know, dad, is this the right decision? Do you, um, do you feel like this would be right for her? And he says that he supports this decision. Like he, he feels like this is the right move. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. All right. All right. Well, we'll be sending lots of love and healing to you for your surgery too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing your space with us. We really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining in and letting us work with your loved ones. We really appreciate you trusting us with their souls. And thank you for allowing us to bring through some beautiful messages from them. Um, we are here next week, I believe. Right, Kel? Yeah, <laughs> let's let's hope the power's on this time. <laughs> we certainly hope so. Barring any okay. dream, uh, tech issues or SDG and E outages planned or unplanned, um, we will be here. Is there anything we need to announce before we close out? 
We have our uh, psychic development circle coming up. It's the 20th at the Metaspace in Normal Heights at 7.30 p.m. You can get your tickets on Eventbrite. And I think we're gonna have a really good group this, uh, this next time. So if that calls to any of you, we'd love to see you there. I think so. It's been, it's been great every time. It's appropriate for all levels and anyone who is wanting to, um, I guess, explore or develop their own psychic or mediumistic gifts. So you can always message either one of us if you want more information or have questions about that. And thanks all for coming and we look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Bye.